Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, friends, and welcome to worship. It is good to have you here on this day the Lord has made. Shall we rejoice? Let's rejoice and be glad in it. I was talking to God when I woke up this morning, actually looking at the puppy saying, let's thank God for today. A huge welcome to you if you are visiting us today, and I know we have some visitors with us because we have a baptism today. That's going to be lots of fun. But a special welcome to all of you from our heart to yours. We hope you feel God's love and goodwill. I want to mention several announcements. First of all, Kathy Kinzer has asked me to mention there are cookies, cookies today, right? So that should be fun. Get those afterwards downstairs in the gym. I'm always used to saying fellowship hall, the gym, the auditorium. Um, there's an interfaith worship service here today in this room at two, sponsored by Hospice of the Sacred Heart. And I wanted you all to know about that. Tomorrow is Monday, and so Monday school is happening tomorrow afternoon, later. The deacons are meeting, like usual, on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, I fly home to New Mexico to be with my family for my sister Jill's 70th birthday. While I am away, I commend you to the capable care of our superb session and our awesome, awesome deacons. You will be in very good hands. We are here for you always. There's a women's tea on Friday. There's no adult education next Sunday the 21st because Lee is away for continuing ed. Some have asked, and it's, the dates have been moved, so we want you to be aware that services for Dr. Richard Rushmore will be the following. The viewing will be at Vanston and James on Tuesday, April 30th, and then the funeral will be here at Covenant on Wednesday, May 1st at 11 here in the sanctuary. There is a graveside committal after that, and then after that, the cortege will return to the church for a luncheon. So lots going on there. Also want you all to know that I've been hoping for a while now to be in the Word. I, I'm convinced there's a huge opportunity for people and pastor to be in the Word together. And so I'm going to offer an adult topical study over the spring. I'm thinking May, June maybe. I'm thinking three sessions and I'm going to ask you to let me know what you would like. Here are your options. Spiritual, but not religious, they're each one session. A biblical diet, the ethics of food production and consumption. The 12 Minor Prophets, that should be fascinating. It was written by Walter Brueggemann, who's one of my favorite Old Testament scholars. And then also written by Brueggemann, Class Warfare in the Bible. Your job, should you choose to accept it, is to simply let me know which two or three of those you would be interested in and a day and time that works well. So let me know or let the staff know and we will go from there. I think that's pretty much it for announcements, right? Well, connecting to God has never been easier or as we have seen, more challenging. In today's text, Paul proposes a plan for prayer that always, always draws us closer to God. You will no doubt recognize our scripture lesson. <laughs> it is more than the perfect abracadabra for finding God. Come, let us worship. Good morning again. Good morning. Friends, Siblings in spirit, join me in prayer as we invoke God's presence among us, more than two gathered in his holy name. God of heaven, Father, Son, and mothering spirit, we come before you today as a family of believers, grateful for the privilege of prayer, grateful for your presence. As we embark on this time of worship, May our unity be a reflection of your presence among us. Bless each soul present here, and may our worship bring joy to your heart. In Christ we pray. Amen. 
Please stand and join in singing our opening hymn this morning, number 475, Oh That I Had a Thousand Voices. call to confession. We call to God in prayer and name Jehovah as eternal, ever-present, and boundless in love. Yet there are times we fail to recognize the Spirit in the dailiness of our lives. Join me now as we confess to God and before each other our need for God's grace. God of heaven, we lower our heads in prayer before you and confess we have too often forgot that we are yours. Sometimes we carry on our lives as if there were no God and we fall short of being a credible witness to you. For these things we ask your forgiveness and we also ask for your strength. Give us clear minds and open hearts so we may witness you in our world. Remind us to be who you would have us be regardless of what we are doing or who we are with. Hold us to you and build our relationship with you and with those you have given us on earth. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose 
for us. Christ reigns in heaven and on earth, intercedes for us with God the Father. Beloved, we believe we are forgiven. We are made new at Easter and always. Amen. And now I want to invite the children forward for a children's message, but kids, listen up. Would you join me over here on this side of the steps today? Children's message coming along. Good morning. Oh, one more time. I think you're as awake as your parents are. Good morning. Good morning. There you are. There's the kids. There's the children. Well, welcome to worship this morning and uh, another welcome to you, especially for this children's message. How many of you here, how many of you children pray? Have you, any of you ever, ever prayed? Most of you have prayed. Okay. We're going to talk about prayer and especially children's prayers here for a moment. I found one this week. You see the, what's on that little sheet that I gave you? There's a child praying in shadow. And the child's prayer goes, Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. May angels watch me through the night and wake me with the morning light. You want to pass that over? There's one more there. When you pray, what do you pray for? Anybody? You pray for what? You don't know what you pray for? You pray for your parents, for your siblings, your friends. You don't? Okay, I'm, I'm getting yes over here. Who else do you pray for? Anybody? You pray for birthdays? <laughs> Christmas? Yes, sir. You pray for your dog. Do you mind telling me what you pray for, for your dog? Do you have any specific prayer requests? For him to be alive and what? Wonderful. Alive and in God's care. My dog Jace is having a tough time right now. He's been diagnosed with something in his spinal column that's going wrong. So, Something in his spine, you know your back, you know how important, how, how important your backbone is? This is not where I was going to go with this. <laughs> but if you children would pr pray for Jace, it, like you pray for your dog, that would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. You have a special opportunity today. I asked you to sit over here so you could see what's going to be happening next. We have a baptism coming next. And by sitting here, you can not only, you can only, not only can you stay here and watch it, but you will have the best seat in the house for the baptism. Does that sound pretty cool? This is a church, not a house. Thank you for that. <laughs> They're going to be right there. Oh, <laughs> I think they're going to be in front. Because so many of you are right there, I think we're going to stand in front of okay. the baptismal font today, okay? But everybody has a good view. I hope this week you will pray, pray for your family, for your friends, for your school, and for the world to be full of love. Let's pray together right now. Lord, we are all your children, big grown adults, and the smallest, tiniest child. Watch over us, we ask, and help us to help others. In Jesus' name we pray, who teaches us as a family to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. Okay, let's get ready. Friends, our Lord invited us to make disciples, to go into all the world, to tell good news to everyone, and to baptize believers in the name of the Son and Father and the Holy Ghost. And sure of his presence with us and confident of the Spirit working within us, today we celebrate the sacrament of baptism. Speaking for the session, I invite Elder Helen Biddle to call the parents forward. Would Maureen and James Tate please come forward with big, sis big brother Killian and big sister Riley? And a couple friends are joining us also. Yeah. we go there we go friends that you might demonstrate your faith and show your purpose before this cloud of witnesses would you please answer these questions of affirmation who is your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. and do you trust in him do you intend your son to be his disciple obey his word and show his love and finally, will you train up your child in the way of the Lord, seeking fellowship with God's people wherever he may be? Can you all get a load of that face? Can you all see that? I want to use his name, but I'm going to refrain from it here for a second, okay? Um, will the congregation please stand? Thanks. Our Lord Jesus Christ ordered us to teach those who are baptized. Do you, the people of the church, promise to tell this new disciple the good news of the gospel, to help him know all Christ's commands, and by your fellowship strengthen his family ties with the household of God? Do you? We do. You may be seated. And now let's pray in consecration. God, creator and sustainer, we thank you for your word at work in the world and alive in Christ. We thank you for the hope we have in your son. As we baptize with water, baptize all us with Holy Spirit, that what we say may be your word and what we do may be your work. Make us one in spirit with this child of God, we pray. Amen. Okay. I am going to try to sneak back here with you. Thank you. We ready? Hi, hey, buddy. I remember we met up at a Starbucks one day, didn't we? Yes. <laughs> Lewis has asked me 15 times if I can get his face towards the camera. Oh, I want to watch his head. I think he'll be fine, but that would be great. What is your son's name? Lachlan Wyatt. Oh, look at that. Lachlan, I hate to do this because this water's cold. It was, it was warm when it was put in here, but it is now cold. Lachlan Wyatt, I baptize you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, ooh, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen. You want to do the honors there? There we go. Thank you. Perfect, perfect. You want to see the kids, don't you? Do all of you children see your new brother? Is, is Lachlan Wyatt cute? He is very cute, isn't he? Let's, uh, you got him? Okay. Friends, see what love God the Father has, that we should be called children. And so we are. Okay. Would you close us in prayer, Helen? God, our creator, we praise you for calling us to be a servant people and for gathering us into this body of Christ. Thank you for adding to our number this brother in faith. Together, may we live in your spirit and so love one another that we may have the same mind of Christ to whom we give honor and glory. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. So we have a couple of small presentations for you. Thank you. We have a baptismal certificate and a small child's booklet that we hope that enlightens your lives, friends. Let's close in prayer, or oh, a benediction, actually. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of Heaven, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, and God the Father be with us all. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. You may be seated. And you may go to Godly Play, or wherever you're going. I have a question for you, friends. Do you pray for each other? I presume you do. I'm sure you think of others in the pews, those that you know and maybe those to whom you do not know. Let's face each other now as we stand and pass Christ's peace from one to another, and of course, beginning by sending our love and God's love to those worshiping online. Let's pass Christ's peace. Thank you. Hope that was not too traumatic. Is it okay? Good, good. Thank you for your help. Appreciate it, guys. Hey, Eric. God bless. Hey, how are you today? Thanks, Carl.
You know, I have served in nine different churches now. And from the tiniest, almost overlooked church that I can remember, Bellsville in Pennsylvania, where they had a small organ, electric organ, no pedals, seven people in the pews. It's a big change to this. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, choir. The way you lift your voices does inspire. I'm sure you will know this text today. It is famous, not wedding or funeral famous, but a favorite Bible verse about and for faith. Anyone who cares about joy in the Lord knows this reading. Reading from Paul's letter to the Christians in Philippi, chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Therefore, my brothers and sisters whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. And I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer, and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Two years from now, it may be that in the call to worship at some church, 
you will be welcomed in the name of the Lord, and then, you ready for this? Then directed to put on an electronic headband from the pew racks. Worshippers will then be invited to breathe deep and, for that hour, give to God the cares and worries brought with them. So they may be infused with peace and inspiration. Why the headband? To help worshipers release worries. So anxieties do not distract them from worship. It's very sci-fi, but the technology already exists. It's called Muse. Muse is a brainwave sensing headband designed to enhance meditation by turning down stress and distractions. The current version works with a companion app called Calm, available now on your smartphone. What's in development are devices for use in churches. Muse headbands have electroencephalography, EEG sensors. Your brain waves are converted to data charted through the app. Wearing the headband, you work through a calming exercise. Muse graphs your mental state during the exercise, telling you how long you were calm, that is, your mind was focused on the exercise, or active, that is, when your mind wandered to other topics, or neutral somewhere between active and calm. The idea is that by using this feedback, you can train your brain to deepen and extend the calm period. How many of you here have tried meditation? Show of hands real quick. How many of you have tried meditation? Are you like me? Is it as hard for you to focus during meditation as it is for me? It's a new world. Apparently there is a new way to stay focused on what we wish. Paul had no such paraphernalia. When he writes to the Philippians, do not worry about anything but by prayer, make your requests known to God. When he wrote that, all he had was his spiritual life. And when Paul speaks of prayer, a mind distracted by worry can be a factor. In fact, for some of us, personal prayer is one of the hardest parts of faith. Prayer is hard for some people, although not for all. There are people in every church, you've met them here, people for whom prayer comes as easily as breathing. Yet some of us who wrestle with maundering minds wonder about prayer. We wonder if our prayers even count. We're so distracted. For example, by any measure, C.S. Lewis was one of the strongest voices for faith in the 20th century. He wrote the Narnia tales. Yet even he tells about a struggle with prayer when young, a struggle so filled with distractions that for a while it led him away from faith. In fact, he said his technique rendered his private prayers, quote, a quite intolerable burden. Here's how he explains it. I had been told as a child that one must not only say one's prayers, but think about what one was saying while saying it. Accordingly, I tried to put that into practice. At first, it was plain sailing, but soon the false conscience came into play. I had no sooner reached Amen than it whispered, Yes, but are you sure you were really thinking about what you said? And then more subtly, were you, for example, thinking about it as well as you did last night? The answer, for reasons I did not then understand, was always, nearly always, no. Very well, said the voice. Hadn't you then better try it again? And I obeyed. 
but of course with no assurance that my second attempt was any better than my first. To these nagging suggestions, my reaction was the most foolish I could have adopted. I set for myself an impossibly high standard for prayer. I go through my sermons probably seven times before I preach them. The last time I went through this one, I went back and I highlighted that sentence and I turned it into red font. You been there? I set for myself an impossibly high standard for prayer. No clause of my prayer was to be allowed to pass muster unless it was accompanied by what I called a realization, by which I meant a certain vividness of imagination. My affections, my feelings had to be pronounced and higher. My nightly task was to produce by sheer willpower a phenomena of prayer which willpower could never produce, which was so ill-defined I could never say with absolute certainty whether it had occurred. And even when it did occur, was a very mediocre spiritual value, unquote. That's grim. No wonder Lewis concludes his description by saying, had I pursued such prayer much further, I think I should have gone mad, unquote. We may not go to the extreme, Lewis did, but we may feel that our prayer time is wasted. We may even wonder if there's something wrong with our faith, our commitment to Christ, if we can't keep cares at bay while we pray. So, should we skip prayer? Should we conclude we're second-class Christians? If we can't use the God jargon and the theology and the eloquent words, should we think that prayer's not worth it for us? No. Praying is a way to consciously reach out to God, to listen for God. Prayer can contribute toward a life less fraught with worry. So how do we learn to pray? Well, first, we might be encouraged that even the original disciples needed to learn to pray. Remember, according to Luke, the reason Jesus gave us for what we now call the Lord's Prayer was because the disciples asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray. But why? Why did the disciples, his closest friends, Disciplined students of faith, right? That's what disciple means. Why did the disciples need such help? After all, they were children of the synagogue. They had grown up in worship. They were infused with public prayers. Here's the answer. The public prayers they had heard did not translate into the practice of private prayer. And so Jesus gave the Lord's Prayer as a model. He understood that praying is something with which many of us need help. Second, we might be encouraged by the fact of spiritual gifts. More than once, Paul speaks of believers having different gifts, talents to work for the church. Paul lists prophecy, service, teaching, preaching, giving aid, acts of mercy, discernment, other gifts. And he says they are given in different measures to different people. Desiderata, never compare yourself to others, for always there will be greater and lesser persons than yourself. True story from another church. One year, the nominating committee chose to use a spiritual gift survey for their task. You ever taken a spiritual gift survey? It's kind of fun. I've got two of them in my files if you're interested. The committee asked church members to take the survey, and many did. This is the nominating committee, right? But the woman who took it in this case, one woman who took it, had been chair of missions. But the committee never got much done. After she took the survey and saw the results, she had a come to myself 
She had a revelation. She saw that her score for the gift of administration was very low, but her score for the gift of prayer was very high. And she thought to herself, wait a minute. No wonder I've had such hard times chairing the mission committee. I don't have the gift of administration. So she went to the nominated committee and asked them to relieve her of the missions committee office and instead take on a position on the church prayer chain. There she faithfully and effectively prayed for people and their needs, a win-win solution. Prayer is indeed one of the spiritual gifts. And like other gifts, it is not given in the same measure to every Christian. Remember, many great Christians of history found praying difficult. Moses was petrified of speaking in public so much that he had to ask his brother Aaron to speak for him. Still, the Bible testifies and the church confirms through the ages all Christians benefit from prayer. So, here are a few prayer helps. First, sometimes we need something to warm our spirits so that we can pray. Some who pray find reading scripture or other devotional literature first helps to prepare for prayer. It's kind of, what's the word when you prime the well, remember? Others use music to warm their spirits. It's like warming the oven before baking. It's like the choir rehearsing before worship. Reading some scripture first can help our prayers rise. It warms our spiritual oven. Second, using prayers written by others is often a good way to open our own prayer channels. There are all kinds of books available. This is my favorite book of prayers. This is the prayers of Peter Marshall and any of you who know who he was can understand why I love this book. It's written just like Marshall prayed and spoke and preached. It's written poetically and it is a powerful book of prayer. As we read others' prayers, we may discover God speaks to us about our own needs through the words of others. And eventually we may add our own requests. The bottom line is prayers from other people can sometimes jumpstart our own. Third, it can be helpful to write our prayers down. Maybe jot a few lines to summarize our thoughts. Some even keep a prayer journal, writing thoughts and feelings down, helps focus our spirit. It's like writing a letter to God. Fourth, just as athletes benefit from routine exercise, which by the way, not all athletes enjoy every day, but they do it, they do it to get better. So too, we may benefit from a spiritual practice. We grow spiritually when we practice making room for the Holy Spirit. And finally, praying for whatever our mind wanders to is a faithful way to stop battling our wandering mind. John Wesley put it, the comfort of prayer may be taken away by our wandering thoughts but the benefit continues. Let me repeat that. The comfort of prayer, the power of prayer, the solace, the safety, the lifting up of prayer, it can be taken away as our thoughts wander. But the benefits, the benefits of the prayer still linger. Some of us may pray better with more meaning, bring more fulfillment and peace. Some of us may pray better if we rely less on the conventional style of prayer, a routine time, a bowed head, folded hands, closed eyes. By the way, if you look through the Bible from start to finish, you will never find anywhere in scripture that it says, close your eyes to pray. It's not in there. 
Praying with our heads folded is no more hands folded, is no more holy than praying with our hands busy at work. Longer and more eloquent affirmations to God are no better, they are no more saintly than short, disorganized pleas flung into the atmosphere when you're stuck in traffic. Jesus did not intend his prayer as a model for the only way to pray. Someday, someday it may be that we have gadgets helping us get closer to God. Technology may come along to help us grow spiritually, but long before today's advantages, Christians through the ages found ways to survive and thrive through the power of prayer. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, may your spirit surround us. May we be reminded that you are always surrounding us. You go before us and behind us. You fence us round with love. Give us peace. Remind us that there are prayers that pass understanding for they find your ear in heaven from our hearts here on earth. Amen. Sorry for that. Let's again be more than one gathered in God's name as we present our tithes and offerings. Rejoice in the Lord, rejoice. 
We thank you, God, for happy hearts, for rain and sunny weather. We thank you, Lord, for these gifts which we give together. Take and use them, we implore thee, to make the world more heavenly. Amen. We are a family, a family of faith. Let us be a family at prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we pray from earth for you in heaven to hear and to touch Anthony. We pray for Kim, who has a stomach flu, your healing hand. For Linda, for a cancer diagnosis. Give comfort as only you can, Lord. We pray for Jeannie Jones' brother, Tom, who had surgery yesterday and who is doing fine, he says. Listening, God, we lift to you and give you thanks for the glory of your presence in worship. We see how you fit see fit to draw us together in community, knit us together, unite us to serve each other as you taught your disciples. Turn our hearts towards the bursting of new life in our midst this season. Point us towards the buds of new leaves, towards softly falling cherry blossoms, towards birds who hop among new grass. Turn our eyes to you, O God, in each springtime signal that life rises after death. In this Easter season, we celebrate the miracle, the mystery of your risen Christ. Let us see your resurrection in our midst. Grant us courage. We need to work towards the miracle of resurrection on earth. And finally, grant us life after fearful diagnoses. Give us renewal where it is needed in relationships, and professional lives. Grant us lasting and true peace in places of conflict and war. We pray that you help us in this time of world division to stop our separations across borders, across walls, beyond religion, religion beyond race or politics. Teach us, Lord, to be truly one, one in Christ, one in spirit, and one in truth. Amen. Let's go out rejoicing with our closing hymn.
I shall miss you next Sunday. I will be in Santa Fe Presbytery, but I love you, and I leave you in good hands. Until then, be encouraged. Go in the name of God of hope, who encourages us and lifts us up to new life to make the world more on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.